It's crazy how many cars are here and it just goes on and it goes towards the right. Craziness. Good morning, it's day 37 getting out. Just had to put my socks on. I keep my socks and my gaiters and my shoes overnight and keep it under the vestibule. It's risky because mice might come and nibble at those socks, but it's usually okay. But first thing I do is I usually pull the socks out and I just kind of pull off any like little twigs and stuff. There's always like little pieces of plants in there and any little one could potentially like spin a little and poke you in the foot. So I like to make, like to make sure it's all cleaned up and then on they go. Just remember to always put on your gaiters before you put on your shoes. So you always always so you always want to put your gaiters somewhere to so you do put it on before you put your shoes on. Because I don't know how many times I put my shoes on and go, ah, oh, I forgot the gaiters and gotta take your shoes off and put the gaiters on. So yeah. So day 37, big day. We're gonna go over Roan Mountain. Right in the morning we have a little climb, then we go down a thousand feet, and then we go up like three thousand up to the Roan Mountain area, and then we just hit bald after bald. It's gonna be a pretty crazy day. Pretty crazy day. So stick around. Ooh, went right in for a shot. It's always nice when all the toes go into the right spot. There you go. Gator next. And next foot. Hope you can't look up my shorts. Alright, nice. Usually it takes a lot longer to put the socks on. Another thing I do I learned from other hikes is I always shake my shoes out. Just kind of hit them together. Um, I guess there are no scorpions and stuff like that in here. But I don't want like, I don't know if uh, brown recluses live around here. And I don't want them in my shoes. Brown recluses are bad. Back to the topic nobody talks about, but is curious about. But anyway, after I dig a cat hole, I bury it and I stick a stick in it. Thusly, sometimes it's a bigger stick, sometimes a smaller stick. But if you see a stick sticking out of a mound or just a ground, don't dig where the stick is. Generally people wouldn't, so the stick thing I like to do. So that's my uh, marker if you ever see it. I think a lot of people do it as well, but I don't know. Here's a fine view at Little Knob Rock Vista. 
And some weird sounding bird. What is that? He's close. I gotta look for him after this pan. Great view. It's a little cloudy today. Might be a little dramatic at the summit. Once the sun breaks through. Beautiful views. So one thing I do in the morning if there's no preview or something, I need to dig a cat hole. I generally like to pack everything up and leave camp and hike, I don't know, a couple hundred yards at least and then start looking. Because I've had the experience on the PCT where I dug a cat hole near camp and we call them landmines. And uh, yeah, you may bump into some and I figure all the campsites on AT, there's probably just littered with landmines. Anywhere that looks like a good spot to dig. That's my guess. I don't know. I don't have the experience of digging near a campsite. Uh, some people do and I guess they've been okay, but it's all luck. Hopefully if everyone sticks sticks in them, you can avoid the landmines, but it's all a big, big gamble. But when I go, I like to go somewhere where there's nobody there. Nobody's probably been there for years, maybe hundreds of years. Maybe not that long, I don't know. But that way, zero chance of landmines. But that's just me. We are here at Hughes Gap, uh, and Richard, the uh, trail angel we met yesterday, he actually left a couple of Gatorades and a couple of Yoohoo's here for us. So I grabbed a Gatorade. I didn't. I left the Yoohoo because it has whey in it, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I got a long day today. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna risk it. But uh, hey, there's a little tombstone over here. Let's check it out. This monument is in memory and honor of the Hughes family who have owned this land since 1878. Oh, I guess they donated this area or they still own the area. And after this road, we go up, up, up. I think it's 2400. I guess it doesn't matter. It's just a whole bunch of climb. There's a little down at the middle somewhere and then we just keep going up. but. We go all the way up and this is actually a huge bulk of the climb for today and highest point of the day coming up. Here we go. I'm going to drink some water to reduce some weight and then just push hard. I'm trying to get out of the wind a little here. I'm at a high point about 1500 feet up now. We go down a little bit and a thousand off. But uh, the skies have actually really cleared up. It was dark this morning. But down below, I smelled smoke, and down below it looks like it just filled in with smoke or something. It's just a haze. It's not even like a easy layer of clouds. And check out the other side. Hard to see through the trees, but it's also just a haze. Smoky. I smelled smoke. Wonder where it's coming from. Where and wonder where it's filling it all in. There is a wind warming wind warning about fires today because I guess it's been so dry for this week that uh, things are combustible now and it's very windy today. I took this little offshoot and there's a nice view here but you can see the haze better here. Just like a thin layer low. I was so focused on this blowdown I didn't even notice this until I got close but that's quite a blowdown. It looks fresh. This tree looks really alive wonder when it came down. <laughs> I mean, there's a little walkway pushed out. I guess there have been enough people going through since it fell down, but maybe, maybe during those storms when I was in Clingman's Dome. Whew. Whew. Yeah. What? 
all of a sudden just on trails this big chunk of ice big chunk of ice out of nowhere it hasn't even been anything else until this crazy it's a thick chunk too oh I, pretty thick we're at the site of the old Cloudland Hotel. I guess there was a three-story hotel here on this knob, just all throughout. And it was supposed to be super luxurious, and it sits right on the line between Tennessee and North Carolina. And I guess at the time, they drew a line through the entire building, like through the banquet table and everything, um, because in North Carolina, for some reason, it was not legal to drink alcohol yet. But in Tennessee, it was legal in 1884 kind of odd and that's uh, funny there's a story here about a sheriff who hung out and watched the line to see if anybody walked over the line but crazy I guess it was uh, expensive though but people get came up here just to escape the heat of the summer and just enjoy the views I guess and there's a old drinking fountain I guess old for now we'll go back to the AT yeah this is the way back and then we'll just continue on we are almost at the top basically of this climb in the Roan Highlands I guess I'm not sure where exactly Roan Mountain is it's coming up near the uh, little side trail I'm gonna take later but uh, whew, we got all these evergreens here pine trees everywhere oh they're the soft type they don't hurt your hands when you touch them. Not the ouchies. Here's a sign for the gaps actually. This is the intersection that goes off to that hotel. And this is going to Carver's Gap, which is where we're going. And on the opposite side it says Hughes Gap, where we came from. Let's go this way. Oh, we're going down. So up there where Cloudland Hotel was, that's Cloudland Mountain. Cloudland Mountain. Too many L's. Cloudland Mountain. So now we're gonna head down. That was a high point of the day. And now we're gonna go to a bunch of balds actually and go around them and over them and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Let's see. I don't remember Rowan Highlands from other people's videos as much. So I don't know what to expect. I don't know what I'm gonna see. So it's kind of exciting. We're going down though, quite a bit here. Down to Carver's Gap, the parking lot. Oh. Here's the fireplace. It's always funny how fireplaces just keep existing when there's no sign that there was ever a building around here before. Anywhere nearby, but it's here. There are patches of ice and snow along this trail here since we hit the top. We're going up though. We haven't gone down much, so I don't know if we're going to a new high point, but really there aren't any ice patches at all. Except that one where I was stabbing a bunch. There's a bunch of snow here and there. So far it's been really like not a problem. And even surprising that there's still snow here. It's so warm today. It's cold at times. Uh, it's overall quite warm. It's amazing that the uh, ice is still here. For quite a while now we've been walking down what looks like it's a really old forest road or something. Not very wide. Not big enough for a car. But... Yeah, we've been doing a lot of switchbacks and just going down this road. And coming up to Carver's Gap, the parking lot, um, it is a Saturday, so, so far I've seen so many people. And I just met a Nobo through hiker who just passed me. Uh, name's Moment. Hi, Moment, and Moment's sister watching back home in Idaho. But uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a crazy one. I don't know. I don't know, saw a few people coming up this way, but I don't think there's going to be as many views this way as going the other way. So the other way might be crazy. Saturday, beautiful weather, cool. I think it's going to be a zoo. We'll see. Here we are at the parking lot. Looks like the trail goes over there. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't notice it. I just saw a couple of cars parked on the side here. But look at all the cars. There's a whole lot down there. And there's a whole bunch parked on the street. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go up a little on the AT here and then take a picture of the parking lot because it's crazy. I thought it would be crazy and looking up at the trail I see a ton of people just coming up and down. It's gonna be a madhouse. 
I walked further over here because there's a pit toilet over there. I thought there might be garbage because we thought there was garbage and stuff. But I guess the pit toilet's locked until Memorial Day. That's a big... Look at all these cars parked here. <laughs> They're pretty much blocking the entire lane. Oh, it's roads closed up ahead, I guess. There's a hotel site up there. Oh, that's the hotel site. Wow. It's crazy how many cars are here and it just goes on and it goes towards the right craziness and there's a whole bunch of people going up there you could see them up there and all those bright colors wow i'm gonna go find some place that's not windy and a little sunny and eat lunch i think but, wow Be peeing is gonna be tough for a while i think there's Ruin Mountain or Cloudland Mountain, I guess. And there's the parking lot. Crazy parking lot. And look at the views to the side. Wow. We're not even all the way up to the top yet. If there is a top. That's where he came from, and the AT actually goes around like that. You can see a huge stream of people coming right there. But a lot of people just cut down the trail there. In fact, you could see a network of trails that people are just walking. There, there. It's all over. It's pretty bad, actually. There's another network over there. Really bad. This whole area is like ball to ball, but on bridges. So you get views over there. And as you can see, we're still in like a big ball, I guess, Rhone Highlands. And off to the left, views way down. It's pretty much views all over. It's pretty wild. It's really nice. Definitely really nice. And then up ahead, I know uh, there's several people I think are gonna go sleep at the shelter. And there's supposedly only a couple of tent sites there, so I'm definitely going to have to push a little past the, um, the shelter site for good tent sites. So I'm going to have to go quite a bit here. Fortunately, I'm pretty close to the little blue blaze to the other bald, so I don't have too far to go today. I just hope that Jane Bald back there was the limit for most day hikers and that hopefully doesn't look like all of them, but hopefully most of them turn back at that point and hopefully it's a little calmer up here here we are at the beautiful junction here to grassy ridge bald and i saw some day hikers coming down i don't see too much up there but i have a feeling that is the final destination for many through hiker uh many day hikers but i'm gonna go up there it's 0 0.6 up 0 0.6 back down but I hurried during the morning, so I have plenty of time now, so I'm not too worried about time. Plus, the sun's setting later and later, so it's actually not too bad. Not too cold either. No excuses not to do this one. 
at all. Except some people may say it just looks like another ball, just like all the other balls. And the views are probably pretty similar. Oh, windy. All right, let's go. Here we are at Grassy Ridge Bald. 360 view, degree views and windy. I think gusts up to 20 or 30 today. Whew. All southerly winds. Beautiful. Clouds are beautiful. Oh, there's a plaque over there. I totally missed it. Let's go check it out. I think that's it for grassy field bald. I'm gonna head back towards AT and I'm gonna get on and I'm gonna woof it to the next water source, stock up and then try to find a good campsite uh, past the shelter. Cause I saw two more backpacking people that they seemed uncertain where they were staying though. They said between two balds and they weren't sure if they were going, I don't know. I think, I guess they were heading north, but I don't know. But uh, I gotta beat them to a good campsite. <laughs> That's the key. I think an interesting thing is of the side trail is this little grove of. I'm guessing they are not rhododendrons. They are mountain laurels because the leaves are smaller. But look at the bottom. There are no leaves at all. Isn't that funny. And up top, thick, thick layer of leaves. You kind of walk through them. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Just views everywhere here today. What a great day. I feel sorry for the people who are going to come through in two days. It's supposed to be raining and blowing, hopefully not lightning, because this, uh, this whole area would be dangerous for lightning. There. Look at the views over there. Whew. Sometimes I just have to check the map because right now we're heading, we're heading west. I'm like, why are we going west? This doesn't make any sense. I have to look at the map just to make sure that I was still on the AT because I honestly haven't been looking for blazes at all. I've just been following the trail. But uh, going west was not the direction that I was thinking I should be going. But looks like we have a switch back here and then we're going to head east and then our campsite should be right there somewhere. But yeah, there's a switch back. <laughs> I'm not lost. Here's my five o'clock shadow again. Every time I pull the camera out, this one gets weaker. That's it for tonight, folks. I'm squatting right next to my tent because it's kind of windy and uh, tent blocks the wind. There's one thing questionable about this campsite. I'll let you look at it and uh, I'll tell you what I'm thinking here. See all this broken up wood? It fell from a tree that's right there. There's a branch that broke off. I don't know. It looks like the branch laid here and I'm guessing Something tore it up looking for grubs, maybe a bear, maybe people trying to start a fire. I don't know, but I mean, I would think it was a bear, but I don't see any bear prints anywhere around here. So maybe it was from last year, but interesting, huh? Could be a bear or bored people. <laughs> <laughs>